in Bosnia, in Bosnia, who went from across the ethnic line are working in the parliament to bring their communities. In Burundi, the women's commission is struggling to bring the voice of the Europeans was affected by the war who and voted for this talk in the Middle East. Israel and Palestine who have been working for the years of the grassroots not only made by the trust needed to sustain peace, but also warning of the dangers of excluding all sections of society, including civil society from the implementation of the peace process. But as you asserted on March 8th, that the women play an important role in countries with mission, peacekeeping and peacekeeping. They are still under and centered in decision making in regard to conflicts. They are working in the reality and they are acknowledged your contacts are excluded and marginalized. Even that women are the the reality of our school after war and know that this leads to the purpose. They are regulated by their own government and the international community. We also acknowledge that if women are to play an equal part in security and maintaining peace, there must be an board politically and economically are represented adequately at all levels of decision making. But at the pre conflict state and very constant needs as well as the point of peacekeeping, peace building, reconciliation and reconstruction. Women around the world look to and support the United Nations and the more peace organization in order to eradicate the end courage of war. Preventing war is impossible while the prevention so consumes such as the numerous amount of the world wealth. It is well documented that the human family is one quarter just one quarter of global military spending to provide food, health care, housing, education, revenue, energy, and environmental exploration, including the removing all land mines and disarming all nuclear weapons, including the removing all land mines and disarming all nuclear weapons. It is a global military spending by 5% each year for 5 years will be free of half a billion dollars a day. The founders of the UN saw a particular need for the Security Council in establishing a system for the regulation of armaments under Article 26. We found that the Council is more of a way than ever to fulfill this rule to address the primary rules causes of war, which is the actual implementation of war. In the same reason, the permanent war economic that has existed since the end of the World War II has created military dependent communities, industry, culture, and economies. Of course, Converting from our culture of war to a culture of peace will require massive investment, but much less investment than has been planned into the rampart militarism we see around the world today. When we talk about government, they are certainly talk, talking about the relative of this man to purpose of war, from weapons of mass destruction to the daily small arms and landings that are among their lives. 
Uh, they are also talking about the need to decide our economies and our function, our minds, our energy, and our assumptions. What world does not mean to men? Men who have fought in war say it is neither glorious nor irreparable work. We see and live with men who live with the fear and terror of war. Years later, with every helicopter that flies by, or the sound of every storm of any car that backfires, the violence that caused in households and co communities across the world as men try to live in this place. What they don't answer the world.
Secretariat. Two, the post senior level presentation on gender and
helps it to establish the standard means of ensuring accountability for violation of the international law committed by peacekeeping personal agency unions. Then, ensure that the PK rule personnel, male and female, and headquarters, and all in the field of gender sensitivity training with the protecting rights and needs of women and girls. PK rule code of conduct, CBDAW, Convention of the Rights of the Child, related international law and local culture, history and social norms. No, the PK rule should support member states and internal organization with gender awareness, guidance, training and material to be incorporated into national training program for military and civilian police in preparation for the deployment. So, improving 50% women in all in consideration is keeping peace, enforcement, peace building, and open preventive posts, including fat, funding, and observer missions. That's it. Avoiding air protection advises us. In terms of peace support operation and post conflict programs, we ask the Council to ensure that under the mandate and action of all UN peace support operations, one, that all women and men benefit equally from the reconstruction initiative, specifically that female ex combatants and civilians are not neglected or excluded from the mobilization and reconstruction reconstruction programs. Two, that LFG and IDP women that they have equal access and benefit of persons, including education and equal enterprises program. Three, require all UN peace support operation to ensure gender disaggregated data collection and the monitoring and analysis analysis for conflict affected adolescents and women. As a means of monitoring the following up to an implementation of the outcome of the open session. We ask the council to require a secretary, a secretary is given at this point. Two, establishing an independent aspect prior to reports on A, women's work in peace building, B, humanitarian use and protection of women during peacekeeping and peace building, C, gender, security council to review special consideration to women affected by armed conflict through requesting that all friends report to the LG and LG's report contain gender components. Four, require a follow-up a follow-up consultation between United Nations Security Year. The wars we witness today reach into people's schools and communities. The body of preventing war and making peace cannot be shouldered by the United Nations system alone. The NGOs and the Security Council today we call upon the Council to accept us the purpose of the United Nations as equal partners in our struggles to protect the most vulnerable communities in the world to build sustainable peace and to eliminate the economic war. Thank you.
The aim of the death of the virus, the death of death, was to highlight the roles of women in the society. I tell you the truth, women are doing a lot in the society. Either in the economic sphere of life, either in the political sphere of life, or social sphere of life. But all these roles we are not recognizing. But with the end of the decade, the aim of the decade was to change the position of women. But with the end of the decade, not much was achieved. The only thing that was achieved after the decade was the awareness. That was what was achieved, the awareness of the roles of women in the society. You know that those roles that have gone on record, now started getting recognition. You know, people now started about thinking about what women can do to improve the, to improve the society. What about to improve their laws, to improve their community, and to improve the society. So that people started taking interest in women. And this is one of the efforts of the United States, uh, United Nations. I mean, raising the awareness of people concerning the role women can play in the society. You know, those, those roles are gone and recognized in our community because of various factors. We have traditional factors. We have patriarchal attitudes that is male dominant, dominant over women. We have our own traditional values. We have our own norms. When you, if you can, when you don't just like your mind back before 1975. You know, women live what is called a choiceless life. Women do not have choice in any matter. You know, there is a uh, popular song that says, the state of the woman is in the kitchen. No matter what you do, no matter what you want to contribute, that is, their roles are not recognized before 1985. But with the end of the decade, still started changing. People started recognizing, recognizing what and what women can do in the society. Now, this paper, I will look at why do we have to include women in conflict resolution. Sorry, before I go to that, my topic is the role of women in conflict resolution. That is what women can do as an initiator of peace or a conflict resolution. That is what and what women can do. Now, I want to talk about three main topics. Why do we let talk about this? Sorry. Why do we need why do we need to include women in conflict resolution? What exactly is conflict resolution? What are the conflict resolution conflict and the techniques? Then I will conclude and recommend. Why do we why are women in conflict resolution? It is an understatement if I say women are more than fifty percent of Nigerian population. I think we all know that. That they are more than fifty percent. They are more than 50 percent. So yes, 50 percent Nigerian population. We all know that too well. And we know that in any conflict, in any conflict situation, women are the ones that suffer most. Either in war, either in anything, women are the ones that suffer most. If men go to war and they get killed during the war, who takes care of the children? Women. Who takes care of the family? Women. Who run around for the family? Women. In case the man is lucky to escape and come home maybe in four days, who takes care of him? Women. So it is like women know where it teaches. There's a popular that, that says those that will, it is those that wear the shoes that know where it teaches. Uh, yes. It is women that know where it teaches. So women are in direct victim of any war. Of any economic violence, women are indirect victims. Also, in terms of men, sometimes because when men go to work, and women have find that they have to take care, you know, the whole, the, all, the, all the responsibility will not be on women. You no, know, in order to survive. Because of motherly instincts, women don't like their children going astray. In order to survive, most women are forced into criminal activities like prostitution, you know, like drug uh, trafficking. It's only just a way to survive, just a way to take care of their family that are in most in any problem. So in any, in terms of any conflict, 
Although women, they enjoy, they continue to they care for their young, the old, the sick, in their community. They show that bodies of their family, simple and deadly, with no help from outside. So when we look at this topic, if that we are in shoes, no we are in Women are indirect victims of any conflict, in, in any conflict situation. And we say now that they consume more than 50% of the Nigerian population. So we will agree with me that it is very, very imperative that in any conflict resolution or peacemaking efforts, it is not important that we include women in any committee. Yes. And that is why we are here to say that women too is the part and part so of any of, of any peace making uh, committee. Is conflict only negative? The conflict only means war. You know, when we ask people about the, the concept of conflict, we often tell them say war fight chaos, oppression, oppression, fantasy and a lot of more. All these words are negative, or at least they have negative connotations. But now I want to ask, does it mean that conflict is always negative? No, conflict is not always negative. Conflict might be positive too. In Chinese language, conflict means opportunity for change. This means opportunity for change. This means that Conflict is neither negative nor positive. What determines the way negative goes is our own personal attitude and our background information about conflict, which normally dictates the way we manage it. You know, for some us, when we hear about conflict, what really comes to mind is negative. But then the conflict does not necessarily mean negative things. And where, where we want the negative to escalate or discalate, it depends on the way we handle that conflict. So people with a negative connotation of conflict manage it in a destructive way, and the resultant effect is all negative. It's all negative. If I am talking to a seminar, I will present it more or less like in a workshop or a conference. You know, when I, for example, I come to you and I report the matter to you, it depends on the individual perception of the conflict. You know, some people might say, ah, ah, how can you take that type of shit? One, so the thousand five, a five now with that person. That person, that person has negative connotation of conflict. If I come to you and say, this person has done so, 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 and so forth. No, not the fact, ah, that is not too bad. Why are you taking it in a bad attitude? Why are you taking it in a bad state? Why do you call that person and discuss it over? Yet the other side of the story. So those mean that that means that those people have a positive uh, connotation of conflict. So when we talk about conflict, it depends on our, on our perception of what conflict is. So people with a positive uh, or the organization of conflict, manage conflict in a constructive way, and the resultant effect is development, change, understanding, resolution, friendship, interaction, communication, progress, peace, love, knowledge, among others. In other words, what we are trying to bring up from what I'm saying is that when you have a positive connotation of conflict, what comes to mind? I know the resultant effect is change. Change. Resolution. Friendship. Peace. Love. Joy. Knowledge. Progress. That and can only happen among those people that have a positive perception of conflict. You know we are not created, we are created individually. And our perceptions of things are different. Why some always have negative perception, some always have a positive perception concerning a particular problem. So women, it is imperative when we want to when they want to become part and parcel of a, a big committee, their attitude of what conflict is must change. That's
That is one. They are adding to their perception of what conflict is for them. We, we must not always regard conflict as being negative. No. So what are the causes of conflict? Conflict is inevitable. No conflict does not necessarily mean war. War, war, war. No. It is inevitable in our everyday life. Every individual encounters one or more conflicts. Either at home, either at work, or at social housing. No, we can say we have conflict over resources, we have conflict over psychological needs, and we have conflict involving values. Conflict over resources are usually easy to identify because they can be seen and are more potentially easy to resolve. This conflict of all when people want to want the same thing and there is not a norm to go around. In some cases, you might, you might also see parties attacking the resources and the use of conflict will be focused on it. Usually, the resources, when the resources are made available, the conflict is resolved. Now, that is very, very common in our community. Conflict over resources. You know, the whole thing cannot go around. And we have so many people fighting for the same thing. Of course, something we are right. It is only when the resources are available that this person is able to get into our own share that there is a resolution. The conflicts over psychological needs are conflicts which are not the same. No, but, but of the fact, the type of the individual is productive capa- 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 capacity. Individuals have many needs, such as love, security, belongingness, friendship. What we are saying here is that conflict to conflict over psychological needs. Our needs are unlimited, and the resources are what are limited. You know, I want to do this, I want to do that. So you may have conflict within yourself. Within yourself, there may be conflict, not only exactly what you want at any point in time. That's why in economy there is a scale of preference. So in this case, there is any conflict, the best thing is to arrange your needs in order of the priority. Then conflict involving values. Those are the most difficult conflicts to resolve. Conflict uh, involving values. What are values? Values are the basis of oneself. Values are our belief system. And when we talk about belief system, nobody is prepared to negotiate with his belief system. Christians are not prepared to negotiate with this. Traditionalists are not prepared to negotiate with this. Muslims are not prepared to negotiate with this. Different ethnic groups are not prepared to negotiate with their own belief system. Of course, conflict might arise. But when you want to express your own belief system or you want to impose your own belief system, belief system on others, it's more likely that a conflict might arise. So we also conflict might arise if parties involved in a conflict, for example, you really want to defend your, your own belief system. The other the different belief system wants to defend his own or his own too. There's every likelihood that the conflict will arise. So, when we are talking about conflict resolution concerning women, we should bear in mind that conflict over values are the most uh, difficult conflicts to resolve. Therefore, it is important and necessary to understand the type of conflict before it can be resolved. The type of conflict that we encounter daily are mirrors, which include Interpersonal conflict. As I said earlier, conflicts that occur within a person. For example, the use of time, the choice of partner, moral question, goals and aspiration. That is interpersonal conflict. Conflict that you have within yourself. Then there is what is known as intergroup conflict. That is conflict between individuals within a given group. For example, a school might be divided 
Over how many credits a student requires for promotion to SS2? That is, the principal myself, he wants about three or five credits, the other might say no, the son might say no, two credits will be enough. Their conflict may arise, and that is intergroup conflict. Intergroup conflict arises when they divide the opinion between two different groups. And that is exactly what we are witnessing all over the country. Intergroup uh, conflict. And then there is, inter there is what is also known as intergroup. The, the second one I said was intergroup. Then this one is the intergroup conflict. Of all between, of all between groups such as clubs, classes, organizations, communities, or nations. There are two communities fighting for one country. That is a group uh, conflict. Now, what are the ways by which conflicts can be handled? I'm sure I'm communicating to women that are present here. Even this. Yeah, yeah. The way we respond during conflict depends largely on the kind of message we receive and assimilated from parents, from peers, from teachers, from family, community leaders. But there are two major ways by which we can resolve conflicts. One, we have what is called avoidance or denial. I mean, that is the easiest thing to do. You know, if you know you don't want to get involved in conflict with another person, no, we do it most of the day. What we do is to avoid that person. We avoid that person so that the, whatever the remarks or suggestion of that person will not want to anger so for us. So, but we will not feel all or frustrated. Then the second one is facing the real issue. That is problem solving. Problem solving is an approach whereby the practice listening with intent to understand the underlying elements. This is not understanding the person, but understanding the, the, the elements in the conflict and attack issues. You see, in a conflict resolution, issues are the main important things, not personalities. You see, if you try to understand personality, that means you have not really solved the conflict. You understand the issues, the elements understand, uh, underlying that conflict. When you understand, you understand and attack the issues, then resolution might come. And furthermore, people using this style, and this problem solving uh, approach, are less concerned about who is right or who is wrong. You know, there are some people that are gifted. In resolving any conflict, they will not blame the right or blame the wrong. No. They will not even blame anybody. They will really attack the issue. And what we are saying right now is that, when we may want to get involved in conflict resolution, it is not personality that you attack, no. You attack issues. You attack issues. You try to understand the elements, underlying elements in that conflict, and then you attack the issues. So this approach creates, sorry, the they, uh, those people using this problem solving approach view conflict as a natural way of life. We have said, because we are many, with different, uh, different values, goals, and uh, aspirations, yeah, conflict is inevitable in our everyday conversation or interaction with people. Because we are different, we have different, uh, different values, there is no way. Will not, the uh, conflict will not arise between us. So this approach, uh, this problem solving approach, creates what is known as win and win solution. You will readily agree with me that there are some people in any conflict situation, there are some mediators, by the time they attack the issue, the, part, the both parties will be satisfied. There will be no blame at all. And that is exactly what we, we should bear in mind. It's a situation, and it's a situation where both parties come out satisfied with solution. They are satisfied because their needs have been met and their relationship has been restored. 
we have known that money comes to it in constructive ways rather than giving to escalate and generate to, uh, uh, violence bring about positive changes we should realize that in every conflict situation there are things that escalate and escalate conflicts conflict often escalates when we manage it in a constructive, destructive way and discarded when we manage it in a constructive way. So let me just mention areas. Conflict is more likely to escalate when other people join and take side. Take side. In any situation, there are usually two groups. So when people are other people now join and take side with the party, of course the other party will feel very very agreed. And then conflict will escalate. When, of, when one of those parties feels threatened, that in both parties, when a party feels threatened, conflict is more or less like to uh, escalate. When there is no interest, no more interest in maintaining the friendship, now some people will say, what is the essence of holding them together? They want to go to war, let them go to war. I don't have any value, but I don't want to maintain. Our right are not interested in that particular group, in that particular community. No, when there, when, when there is no more interest in maintaining the friendship. Conflict is more likely to escalate when there is increase in showing of anger, fear, fear of domination. You see, some people in fearing to be dominated, they usually express their feelings in a very frustrated way. And when people uh, refuse to attend and avoid the needs of the other party, you see, in a conflict resolution, what is most important is a compromise. Even our day to day activities, our day to day interaction with people, we must not take it all. We must not take it all. We must be able to compromise, no matter what. To want a resolution, it is there to make a compromise. Like when there is a lack, conflict is more likely to escalate. When there is a lack of skills needed for peace making. You know, when we talk about peace making, conflict resolution, do you really agree that it needs skills to do that? It needs skills, 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 skills to do that. Some people are very, very unskillful. When it comes to uh, peace making, they are very, very unskillful. You know? They attack persons instead of attacking the issues. They attack persons. So, conflict uh, resolution of peace making requires skill. And conflict is likely to escalate when those that are involved lack necessary skill. And on the other hand, conflict is more likely to escalate when those involved in the problem focus on the problem rather than that people. When emotion, frustration, fear are expressed in a more direct way rather than an indirect way. Conflicts are more likely to escalate when threats are reduced or eliminated. Conflicts are more likely to escalate when these are expressed and discussed more openly. People's needs are acknowledged by the other party. People involved realize and use their peacemaking skills. Now, entry to any conflict situation is often an unpredictable task. You don't know what will happen. So, any party or any committee that are trying to resolve any conflict must, must gather information concerning that uh, conflict situation. Most of the information is needed before bringing the party together for peacemaking. I tell women have been living a choiceless life. Now for women to make impact, it is necessary to acquire education. That is the first and foremost. Education is an instrument of change. Without education, you will be static. It's as simple as that. Without education, your voice will not be heard. 
It is as simple as that. Without education, nobody will recognize you. It is as simple as that. So, <coughs> so education has been described as an instrument of change. For any step a woman wants to take, education is important. Without the education, no way. The home of the woman will be the solution. Peace making and peace building. But, as I said earlier, they will be educated. So what happens to those that are educated? They are underrepresented. The level of illiteracy, when we compare the level of literacy with illiteracy, illiteracy it is why, of course we say women are these, women are coming out, women are lecturers, as I tell you in my department, we have about uh, 27 staff, and there are only two women there. Even the whole universities, you can count the number of women that are there. If anything comes up, women will be underrepresented. So we know that decision making is very, very important. But women are underrepresented anywhere you may think of. And we have so many universities in Nigeria. How many women uh, visit do we have? And that now, none. The last one we have was, uh, I think our time was already expired. None. So many HODs, how many women do we have? Even the present day political arena, how many women do we have? No. Uh, sorry, they are, but they are very, very limited. They are very, very few. Yes, they are very, very few in all states of life. But not to talk about, uh, about political life, economic life, social life. Women are grossly underrepresented because they are, the level of literacy is higher than literacy. That is why I said, first and foremost, women need to be educated. That is first and foremost. So, if women are to play an equal party in security and maintaining peace, we are talking about the role of women in maintaining peace. So if women are to play an important part, equal part in security and maintaining peace, they must be empowered educationally. Empowered educationally means they must acquire education. They must be empowered politically. Empowered politically means they must go out and participate in politics, in political process. They must not be at the side. They must be involved. You know, it's only, I don't really have time to start discussing about the problems of women in the society. You know, they must be relevant, but they must be involved. There is no way you can get anything on the platter of gold. No, you have to be involved. You have to be involved. does not come easy. No, you have to, you, you really have to sweat it out. Even with women. You know there is a popular insight that says what a man can do, women can do better than what a man can do. And women can be women too, but they must be empowered economically. That is another problem. The economic factor. But I think now the women are really picking up more even more than men. They are picking up more than men. So, for women to be involved in a conflict resolution, full participa participation of women in power structure is necessary. Full, a full involvement, that is it, involvement too is very, very necessary. Involvement in all efforts for the prevention and resolution of conflicts. Equal access, full participation, of women in power structures, in uh, involving in all the efforts for the prevention and resolution of conflicts. Also, we have local women organizations. We local women organizations who should be an integral part of negotiating things and process. There is need to be given for recognition to the impact of women at grassroots level. 
Yes, that is the most important thing. Women at the grassroots level, there is need for recognition. There is need for recognition in terms of conflict resolution and peace building. And I want to tell you the truth, and this has been one of the resources that has gone on tap. You see, men, of course, I'm not here to start talking about gender dimension. But of course, we will realize that men and men over the years have been involved in one thing or the other. Yes, there is no way, no way to not yet. We know that women are among. There are those people that are among to be involved. Those people that are among to be incorporated. That is what women are saying. So last year I now said, sustainable uh, peace, sustainable peace. Depends on local involvement of both parties. Given that women constitute at least half of the community, their role in supporting conflict resolution is very, very crucial. Thank you very much. More round of applause to our guest speaker. By now, women will be more articulate to fight for their rights. Of course, to work with you today, I want to believe that. But that doesn't give you the privilege to go home now, to go and show your husband and say, You may touch, you may get power, give it to her and her father. So you go and tell your husband or somebody like a man at home that look. As you get power, you don't try to impart. There is no problem for you. Thank you very much, sir. And when the guest speaker was addressing the people's keynote address, there is one thing that comes to my mind. And that is, this thing is very, very prominent, but uh, she did not mention it. Do you want to believe that there is a conflict between the other and the wife? That is essentially during my time. <laughs> because you know, there are some times when the other will just call the wife. Ah, what's that for now? Answer me. You are the first You just have to get me. I know I know get time. You know, what we can tell you? Do you agree with me? Yeah. Uh, I want to believe that we have been told for now to say to that whenever the conflict arises. So thank you very much, ma'am. I shall now particularly call uh, our guest speaker, a woman association. Thank you very much. Now we will talk conflict. We want to call on some people that come and demonstrate to us how conflict can arise and how peace can be made at the same time. That's my fear. That's my fear. You cannot tell me. I call this year and I'm not I'm not I'm not If I get what you want, yeah, what is the first thing to do? No, I like that. 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 I I want to believe you all understood what you are saying today. There is a conflict and there is a compromise. So we agree at the end of the day. And that is the best thing the woman is trying to pass through to us. And we have just demonstrated it. Now it's time for question and response. If there is any question that is bothering you on what the lecture we have just had from our guest speaker, can just simplify the lesson of your hand and ask the question so that the woman will answer it. Any question before we proceed? <laughs> Maybe if there is anything that is not clear to you. Comment. 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 
who are dressed up. So that to be able to take part, to be empowered in conflict resolution, is just for how to have education. Fine, I agree with you. Totally. But there is something to learn to get into it. If you have a bit of education, and you don't have a sense of grammar, no one will make you think of something. If you go into a group, and you dress in front of lightning, eh? green over brown, white over you know, what is gray, then you, you don't catch the eye of anybody. They ignore you. Your education was in fact of your positive sense of glamour. You must not to dress for a day. You are to be able to show yourself so that people take notice of you. If you do not say you are there, who will say it out? Nobody. Sir? I could see from the papers read on the address of the chair that the UNO is preoccupied with it. a lot of paperwork and they waste nation's monies on papers. And I think the United States government is going the right direction by creating the Ministry for Women's Affairs. Most of these things, most of these papers, most of these resolutions, and most of these suggestions should be in their file. And then they map out strategies for implementing the suggestions to go through them. They will get the right type of ladies to come on. And instead of ladies getting in